Are you ready? What's my name? What's my, what's my name? What's, say Kareem Miley. Say Kareem Miley. You're listening to the Hip Hop Debate Show. Okay, so hear me out. The official podcast of Kareem Miley. In about two seconds, Kareem Miley will begin to speak. All right, Kareem Ali, Kareem Ali TV. This is the Are You Serious podcast where we discuss various topics through the lens of hip hop culture. We got a hot show today. There's going to be some disagreements here. So on the show, we got my man, Jay Swan, poet, MC, the incomparable Jamba One, my guy, great live performer, MC, had a great album come out soon, great hip hop producer out of Baltimore City. Got my man, Slankster Hughes, the co host. The weirdo. <laughs> I don't know what's going oh, on there, man. Bro. We I'm all ready. <laughs> I'm ready to tell these niggas the truth. <laughs> <laughs> we also got my man, uh, good brother, poet deep. The the, the guy, man. I mean, I, I love I love this guy's music. I still remember some of the melodies when I first saw him at a couple shows back in the day. That I am poet deep. A lot of dope. We we actually have a record coming out later in the summer. You know what I'm saying? Some conscious shit. Uh, Love, love the brother's rhymes and everything he stands for. So today we're talking about a lot of things that are going on in the hip-hop community, man. Um, Kendrick Lamar came out and dissed what we call the big three of the last generation, J. Cole and Drake. Um, we. Submitting himself. He does this like every nine or ten years. He'll just yeah. throw out some <laughs> random disses on someone else's project. And, you know, hip-hop is a competitive sport. J. Cole responded to that diss with a diss of his own, then later retracted it and apologized. And my question to you is, is hip-hop a competitive contact sport? Or did what J. Cole did, was it a, a, a move that represented a higher level of character and maturity? And so first, I'm going to go with J. Swan. What do you think about this, uh, Jay? What do you think about J. Cole's diss and his apology? All right, for starters, right? When I uh, listened to the diss, I was like, okay, it was like little light jabs. It wasn't like a big diss, right? I thought it was cool. But two days later, when I found out this man apologized, I'm like, are you serious? Are you serious right now? Like, I was highly disappointed. Like, I get it that, you know, it's all about, like, your mental health first. Right, I'm all for mental health. However, you, for like the past three, four years, on a guest feature saying you've been the best rapper, best MC, period. Like, no one could touch you. No one is in the hemisphere. Like, you have no competition. Call yourself the rap Muhammad Ali. I'm the big three, but I feel like Muhammad Ali. I feel like I'm the best. But now, all of a sudden, oh, I didn't mean that, man. I'm sorry. Yo, I, it, it just didn't feel my spot. I'm like, nigga, what? <laughs> nigga, what? Jammer one, what are, you, what are your feelings on this? Is, this? is this apology? Is it fair or foul? Um, At first, I thought it was, it was weird. But now I think about it, the man set a new standard. You know what I mean? Like, he, it wasn't in his heart. It wasn't in his heart, and he didn't want the smoke. He was probably cackling at the knees, scared to death. So he was just like, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? That's like, 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 like you in the grocery store, right? And you accidentally bump into Mike Tyson. And Mike Tyson was like, nigga, what? What you going to do? Right. <laughs> You're going to be like, oh, my bad. <laughs> Yeah, but if if they like like Kendrick got dudes shook for real, he I mean really... you ain't gonna swing at Mike Tyson and then be like sorry. <laughs> you might, you might, you might. So you think so you think this guy was in fear, poor D. Tyson what's died. your what's your take on this situation? I know you had a slightly different position. We want to hear what you have to say about this. Yeah. So first first of all, what I what I want to say um, is about my perspective because I know Kareem, you're. Attraction to me was based off of the post that I made, right? Right. And so what I was looking at was the apology aspect of him explaining 
like of him retracting, of him having a heart to retract something that he put out there, right? Okay. Now, personally, I don't think, I can't say this for certain because I'm not J. Cole. I don't think it was made out of fear. I think what, what I see is that it came from a place of being gassed up, him not operating totally under his own agency, um, and him getting caught all up into that energy. Because most of a lot of the hip-hop battles that we talk about, most of these guys do not maintain battles off of their own agency. And a lot of times when we watch their interviews and stuff and we find out later in life and stuff like that, we come to find out that it at times they don't even always want it to keep going like that, but they can't look weak. Mm. And so, so that's ego. where I'm... Ego. Say it again. <laughs> ego. Ego. Right. right. And so that's where I respected it from was from a position of who he is and taking a moment to let go of his ego and, you know, in a space where as though I haven't really seen, you know, many MCs do that. And uh, <laughs> uh, well, slick, uh, slick Vic Low, what do you have to say about this? You're, you're sitting staring down at us, like you know, you come, like, <laughs> like you Musa coming down from the mountain with the tablets. Yeah, it's just the angle, it's the angle of the camera. <laughs> Look, I could, I could, I could just recite the rhyme I wrote about the shit the, and post it on Facebook the other day because that really explains it all. I could do that, but that, 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 that's a bit much. But what I will say is that um, I think this is indicative of a larger syndrome that's going on in hip hop, right? And this conversation weaves into the future conversations of this entire ordeal, but there is a absolute infestation of overall averageness that has infested MCing in the mainstream rap world. And, and we are seeing that in, in real time because Kendrick's, Kendrick's verse was decent. J. Cole's right. response was, vehemently average um, and I won't even go on beyond that but the averageness increases with each response it appears and and what I see is that we are confusing maturity or you know manhood brotherhood um, combating so called aspects of toxic masculinity and hip hop, we're confusing those elements with the healthy elements of competition that hip hop was founded on. And just because we're willing to be competitively aggressive with our creativity, that pushes the art form forward. That doesn't take away from it. That has always been an aspect of hip hop, but we confuse this with some of these new political things and it's taking away from the culture in my opinion. Niggas can get on the court and go hard in on the court against each other and then afterwards shake hands, have a Gatorade, and then, you know, have a stronger bond because of it and, and therefore make each other better. And that has been an element of emceeing that has always been a part of the culture. So what, we're, what we see with what's happening now is an indicative of the larger dumbed-down aspect of hip-hop in the mainstream where the bar has been significantly lowered, where... Something like a takeover versus of ether propelled the art form forward. And then later on, they were able to come together and be stronger as a unit, where now we're seeing something like this, where quite honestly, for J. Cole to one, like Jay Swan said, talk all of the shit in his, in his verses on other people's songs and stuff for the last couple of years. And then when it comes time to show up or shut up, just, just bow out. Like that's, to me, that's not, being like, oh, he was the bigger man. That's not him saying like, oh, it wasn't in my heart. No, you didn't have the heart to actually do what you've been claiming to do so long as an MC and actually show that you were the better MC because you just didn't have it. You put out that weak shit. It wasn't that good. And then you you tried to moonwalk the shit like a sleepover at Neverland. Like, come on, yo. Come <laughs> on, yo. Like, that that is not iron sharpening iron. Iron can't sharpen iron if both sides are producing fucking plastic. It is an indicative element of the larger dumbing down of the culture, dumbing down of the craft. Like people don't even want to fucking rap hard no more. 
It's sarcastic ball. It's it's the Pro Bowl with all flags. It's, it's nobody wants to actually have a full contact sport and hip hop anymore. This shit was founded on competition. B boys get in the square and see who's better, and it evolves and it propels the art form forward collectively. That's the way hip hop works. It goes all the way back to African and griot culture when griots and Mali had to compete. Who was the best storyteller? Who was going to be declared the griot for the king? It's a part of how we evolve and push our art form forward. And it, and, and it is a part of what was passed down from African cultures into hip hop culture. And so now, because of elements of white supremacy coming in and being like, oh, all these aspects are indicative of toxic masculinity. Everybody got to be on some softer shit. No, hip hop is built on coming out of poverty and created an art form out of rough circumstances that is created from rough circumstances. So you go hard. Nobody wants to go hard anymore. It is a larger downfall of the culture dumbing itself down to the masses. And it's wrong. It's bad. It's stupid. And I don't like it. It's Are you fucking finished? whack. Are you Get finished? that shit out of here. Could you imagine if Karis wanted to be like, oh, I'm sorry, PF Dawn. I didn't mean to throw you off stage and shit. You know what I mean? My bad, MC Shan. Let me let me Are, take are you down. finished? I mean, <laughs> let me. I'm not. Let me. Let me take down you, the bridge talk, over off you, streaming. Slankster, now. Like that's crazy. You talk for yo, you talk for 13 minutes and 47 seconds. Did, man, did you have that off your chest? Did you have it off your God chest now? <laughs> I mean, I mean. So you don't believe that because you know where battles could go to or where the the violence that ensued in the past. I'm not saying that this is necessarily that. That's different. But, but that's you don't people mix street culture with hip hop. True, different. true. But you don't think that someone can could walk back and make a different decision that's right for themselves and their spirit that they just don't want to, they don't want to continue. Can, but that shit is weak. Should it be viewed as weak? I feel it, like it's, that's it's, gas. It is. It's an, from an MC standpoint, it's weak. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, su I'm ultra competitive. I'm not as much as I probably used to be, but I want to beat everybody and everything. That's probably not it, yeah. it, it, it was it was great when it came to sports. I don't know if art is necessarily the same but way. But it's I different when you claim to be the Mike Jordan, yeah. but you can't be the yeah, Mike Jordan wanna, with that mentality. Yeah, but at, but yeah, at this point, you want to be the best at everything. I do, I do. Whatever I mean, I, I had that standard for myself. I want to beat other people. But that was that was a direct competition, physical competition. In art, yeah, if I was on a song with some of you guys, I would try to outdo you, but not at the expense of the song. At this point. I mean, I want to make a great song, but I wouldn't want to battle any of. I would rather build with you than to battle with you. Paul D, what do you what do you think about what Slankston said? How do you feel about that? I think Slankston um, brought out some um, great things as far as the competitive nature mm -hmm. of hip hop of where uh, of where he started. I also agree about the uh, the kind of softness. That has become a part of the competition. I, I I'm not in um, disagreement with that. What I am looking at, though, I, I don't even really want to even say I'm really in dis uh, um in, in in disagreement because he's 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 judging this based on the merits of being the MC, mm -hmm. and I'm basing this on the merits of being a man. And if you really feel like your spirit ain't with something, and and I'm really kind of judging that from you know what I mean you know before I changed my life I was a street guy, mm -hmm. right? And so it's like if your heart ain't in this I don't care what you because when you step up now don't get me wrong it's crazy though don't get me wrong it looks very crazy because he really jumped out there right and that's what make it look that that's the whole thing yeah. just make it look so crazy because for one who you profess to be because like now it's some soul searching right. How are we supposed to even look at you now? Right. We, we kinda... can't look at you like like prime example. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even be too interested in hearing him talk talk stuff no more. I'm gonna be honest about that. Because yeah. it's like if you're gonna be in this doing what's best for your spirit, if that's your lane that you found for yourself, you need to honor that now. You know what I mean? So I'm saying all of that. I'm, I'm saying all that to say is I don't know. I'm judging it off the merits of a man. If he felt right. in his spirit, this ain't right. So to me, what's left to be seen is how do he proceed forth from this point on with that? Yeah, it's kind of like I can't even look the guy the same anymore after he was like, bro, like he was having a hell of a run as an MC, like, you know, killing it, but he was. Once you just come out the gate, it's kind of you know what? It's kind of like worse when uh when Drake had 
uh the ghostwriting. It's like I can't call you the best. <laughs> I can't call you like in the top three anymore. You know what uh J. Cole is right now for like Dragon Ball Z references? It's like Goku, Vegeta, and Gohan. And Gohan is now Yamcha or like Yajirobe. Like he's not even a conversation. He's gone. Can't even get Piccolo. <laughs> Nah, no, you know, nah, he not even Piccolo. He the uh freaking turtle. He's uh Master Roshi's turtle now. Shit. Hey, he made the guy <laughs> Pikachu. <laughs> God damn. Pokemon. And, and you know what's that's crazy? Different, that's a different show. Like J. <laughs> Cole. J. Cole will diss Kanye West, Wale, and Lil Punk. And people forgot all about that. Man. It's it's easy and, to like, outwrap fans, little Yachty. And like he will, uh, his fans will like try to gaslight, but you don't even like mention those. I wouldn't even say they were bad, those, but he still dissed them. Like, come on, man. It's like, it's like, yo, bro, like, can you, he, Kendrick attacked you first and you apologize. And I'm like, yo, bro, you trying to make it seem like it's going to go street. I'm like, none of you guys are street niggas. Y'all not gangsters. Walk in the back does look crazy, though. It's like, if you felt that way, you shouldn't have said anything. But they're jumping out there and saying, uh, I don't want it no more before the guy gets a chance to respond. I find that a little, you know. That's like Jay-Z. A little that's soft. Like Jay -Z. Soft that's, like Jay -Z. that's like Jay-Z right after Summer Jam. Like, hey, on the radio, uh, hey, Nas Prodigy, I just want to say I'm sorry, man, for right. coming out with the takeover in no, like In that. no way would that have been acceptable at the time. Um, so what is it about Kendrick Lamar that people just don't want to, is he that good that people don't want to battle this guy? I mean, it was a time where it looked like J. Cole apologized, Lupe, yeah, Max Labor texted him and apologized. <laughs> whole, What's going on? A pattern people, of apologies, right? Yeah, why, that's why, interesting. Is, is he the, what, what is he? Is the mother people shit going fear on. him the way they did rock him in 1990? <laughs> like, what's going on? Yeah, it's yeah. very interesting, right? Because yeah. Kendrick got the moments, yo. He got the yeah. moments. He shake things up. Every time he drops something, and then they be listening to that BET freestyle. Yeah, it <laughs> makes you like wonder if some of his uh, "quote unquote" gang affiliations got some more, some more heft to it behind the scenes. Is, is, yeah. is he is he that far? Is he that far advanced from the people of this generation from a lyrical standpoint that no. he should cause them to fear him? No, or, I mean, what do you think? He's, How do you feel? He's he's, he's significantly. Wait, wait, hold on one second, Paul D. What you got to say about that? What do you feel about that? I think. Kendrick Lamar is a great lyricist. I I, I want to state that, right? Okay. I've always felt like his style was like throwing spaghetti on the wall and saying with sticks. Great production. He has, I mean, like, I think he's I think he's a great musician, but I think he's like he's more creative more than anything. You know what I mean? To me. Right. And it's like he he comes off to it as a genius. I I I know many lyricists that I will put before him that I feel like that's in the game that will like tear him to shreds like lyrically. Oh, oh yeah, name name a few. I I choose, I'll take your man. Where's the five line? Oh yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. My man. I, I'm, I yeah, can yeah, name yeah. a few lyricists that will give Kendrick Lamar the business. Who's lyrically. that? Who? Lupe Fiasco. Uh, who else? King Lokes. Okay. Um. You got to uh, shoot. I'll even throw in um, Crocodile. Okay. I mean, the, I mean, the guy guys. behind you on the wall has given Kendrick the blues on tracks before. Oh, yeah. You talking about this guy? Marshall Bruce Mathis? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, the, not the Bruce in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No. Uh, yeah, no, I mean... I I mean, I agree with that sentiment that Too Deep and Jay Swan are saying because we've had some of these discussions before. And again, it's indicative of the larger dumbing down and lowering of the bar in hip hop. And like Kendrick, to me, is is marginally better than those people we're comparing to him, him to in the mainstream, his so-called pairs of contemporaries, the quote unquote sham of the big three. He's better than them by a few <laughs> steps. But when we're talking about him singing, look, it's niggas who can rap. It's niggas who can really rap rap. And then it's God tier. None of the so-called big three is anywhere near God tier. There are people who are within the range of God tier who will absolutely abolish these so-called big three type of cats, Kendrick included. 
Royce the Five Nine was dated. Absolutely a different level. Lupe Fiasco, absolutely a different level. I'll even say Jay Electronica, a different level. Really? Like Jay Electronica. Th there are That's tears and the mainstream. If we're just talking about rapping, the mainstream, the mainstream feeds us this idea of who's supposed to be quote unquote the best. But in this era of mainstream music, that bar is so low that Kendrick can rap a little bit above that bar. And to people who don't know any better, it makes it look like he's in some God tier shit. To me, he's somewhere in between. But those people y'all stated, there's a, there's there are others. You know, you got your Feral Monch. You got you got a number of of MCs who are on a level above where the mainstream wants to elevate certain people that they put on their platforms to. Their criteria and, um, for judging what's level. the best is totally different from people who are practitioners of the art form. Like people like us on but the show, we, we, we when the, we when the mainstream dumbs the masses down, the masses sure. don't know how to how to appraise things. But I'm gonna say this though, this is the thing. Um, when you talk about God tier MCs, right? A God tier MC can be taken down by somebody who raps ABC. And that's the thing that makes Kendrick so deadly is he has that, he has the ability to dumb down to the point where people who are not really in the culture can understand it. Just think about when Machine Gun Kelly dropped that bomb on Eminem. Machine Gun Kelly can't rap all that good but he gave him and them that work because his style is so is so basic. Whereas Eminem can be like sometimes you could be Technical. so good you so, yeah. up by your own ability. That's what makes him so good. That's the thing. So yeah, it looks I mean, like you, you have something. On, you foreshadowed something that is he said, not uh, this discussion. But Shane Gun Kelly. I mean, yeah. it was a cool. Work. Until Eminem he, responded. <laughs> yeah, you think he beat Eminem? Yeah, but who remembers Eminem's response like that? I, I Eminem annihilated him. I'm he got like 100 bro. million views on YouTube. I mean, it's, I mean, it's largely agreed that Eminem did ultimately win that battle. Lyricism, who ain't heavy into lyricism like that? You got to be able to understand their way of thinking. Like for us, yes, Eminem obliterates Mr. Sun Kelly. But for like the average hood booger, yeah, machine <laughs> Kelly on that work. I understand what Jam is saying. Good lines. He One second, though. Jam, I understand. Yeah. What, what, I understand what what Jam was saying because, like, if you're watching a boxing match, for example, for a casual person, they want to see knockouts. They want to see it look like a Rocky movie. But if they're watching someone like Floyd Mayweather, who may be the most scientifically advanced boxer ever. It looks boring to them because they can't see all the things that he's doing, all the nuances in terms of defense and and uh, the angles that he's using. They don't understand it. So it's the same thing with lyricism. We're hearing everything Eminem's doing intricately, but the regular person, they just hear like a straightforward diss. They just hear it, him rhyming in sentence patterns. So I can with see why they would think that. Uh... I don't agree that he beat Eminem, but at the same time, I can see why some people may uh, like that better. Yeah, I mean, one, a lot of people can be wrong at the same time. That's always true. true. But two, I would say, if anybody, though, Eminem actually is pretty good at doing both the complex thing, but also putting in the punchlines that people right. are going to hear when they're just listening on the surface. But three, he's right that Kendrick is a really good hybrid of both of those things because he's he's able to be both palatable and complex at the same time. And that is what makes him really deadly. That is what makes him almost like a Lennox Lewis in a lot of ways. Okay, so yeah. we got about just under seven minutes. I'm going to let everybody get their final thoughts. We're going to start with Jay Swan, your final thoughts on the J. Cole Kendrick situation or anything you want to talk about as far as Eminem or whatever. Like, look here, like, I can't look J. Cole the same. Like, it's kind of like this, man. Like, I said what I said, man. Like, he let Nas down and a whole lot of people oh. down. Let Nas down again, huh? <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Y'all turn. Let the whole culture down this time. Oh, man. It would, it would look crazy if he was to come back and actually – uh, walk back his apology and now try to battle if Kendrick came. He back. can't do that. I know. That he even can't possible. Be that even pour it deeper, be like, nah, nah, son. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm logging off after that one, bro. Don't do that. Well, D, what are your final thoughts yeah. on this? How do you feel about the situation totally? I feel like he really needs to be like accountable for defining his his direction. 
<laughs> like seriously, as an MC, like right. he, he really needs to define that because that's that's major what he what he did. Because also he didn't put stuff out there about other people. There was no apology behind that, correct? Right. So the thing is, is like, how do you define yourself as an MC? You know what I'm saying? This this tier that you you're classified in and all of that. Where do you go forward from now? Chama. Um, early I said he might have set a new standard, but I'm gonna take that back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gonna walk it back now. What's up? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna take that back. <laughs> yeah, he that broke the rules. That jam Cole. I, I could understand, like, if you feel as though like you coming at your homeboy and it's like, oh man, I shouldn't have done that. But yeah, yeah. Um, you gotta have the wherewithal to be able to say beforehand, I'm not gonna do this. Plus, with hip hop, you you know you you just don't do that. You broke you broke the rules. You broke like one of the major rules. When the right. when it's a battle, it's a battle, and you got to see it through. Yeah, he made That's himself it. look kind of crazy. Uh, uh yeah. doing that. I mean, I I could see if he had said something egregious, like about a dead relative, someone's child, or something <laughs> like that, and you had to you did something super super ugly, pun intended, mm -hmm. and you decided to like, <laughs> you know, wait a minute, that was that was across the line. But <laughs> but them right. little light them little light distance. He didn't even throw an elbow strike. It was just like you know what yeah, I mean. Like jazz. So. He ain't even he ain't get on nothing personal about Kendrick at all. Yeah, right. You know? It's it kind of hard like, to do that about little, Kendrick. Little, Kendrick stays so low key that it's hard to even research about his personal life. Like Drake would be an easy target. There's so much stuff to say about Drake. But Kendrick, yeah. I just don't understand how you would even battle him. You had to come almost come at him straight with rhymes. Slankson, your final thoughts. I, you yeah, got four I minutes. Mean, Please don't use yeah. them all. I didn't. I didn't already talk for like seventy-seven years. So, I mean, all I'll say is, you know, to me, the 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 sham of the big three has always been a false reality because it's based off of a mainstream criteria that is inferior. It's like it's like people in the NBA scoring sixty points now. You know, you can't compare that to Kobe scoring eighty because nobody's playing real defense. Like, it's, so it's not comparable. And I feel like what we're seeing is the proof of that. That you know, it's a sham. And it's not even like he's like you said. It's not even like he said something crazy. He didn't say, "Oh, you're a short little bitch. I'm gonna shoot you." He didn't even go. He didn't even say nothing like that. Like he didn't even really go hard. And then to punch somebody in the mouth with a soft punch and then be like, "Oh, I'm sorry," before they even get ready to hit you back. Like that's breaking all the rules. So does anyone yeah. have anything that they're gonna? If they want to plug, pour it deep, we have a new record coming out. Anything you want to push forward? No, no, um, no, no I, don't, I don't have any. No, 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 no music related. But check that uh, brother out though, because he got some old music that's up there that's still, still fire. You know, what I mean? oh, it's deep. Yeah, Jamma, any new records, Swan? Yeah, check out, check out. I'm just going to leave this here, streaming everywhere. <laughs> 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 Slikes, do you want to you, you want to take us out with the rhyme that you have about this? You got two minutes of forty five seconds. Yeah, let's hear. Rap nowadays is football without pads. Graffiti with no signature. IG with no at. Nobody trying to get tagged. I'm mad. I wish niggas would turn their notepads to maxi pads and actually go for blood. It's sad. The industry is lyrically a modern day Pro Bowl. Everybody tuck your flags. Full contact rap is a thing of the past. You couldn't produce ether if you were in a science lab. It ain't right to me. That apology bullshit. Nigga only did it since it's evident Kendrick's the better lyricist. Stop the hype, see. Your illest verses somebody else wrote, most likely. Mediocrity the new dope, fake humility is the new everybody like me, mainstream music just don't excite me, shit, I tell a rapper quick, you can't fight me and you can't outright me, fuck J. Cole, I'm ashamed you look like me, more than just Nas now, you lit the whole culture down it doesn't make any sense, there really isn't any defense damn yeah, well, the camera <laughs> didn't want to look at you no more, don't just eat the J. Cole like that man, jeez that ain't, even, that ain't even the whole rhyme but you are yeah, a J. Cole that's, looking that's motherfucker though Joe. Yeah, that shit's crazy, yo. <laughs> you really are, though. You really are. <laughs> yeah, it was so bad. Look, he could have at least gave us a week. Peace is an excuse if your peace don't pack heat. That shit is weak. And your stands can't mask it. I see a future of more bad rappers and caskets. The artist would suffer when the mainstream elevates the average. You can't sharpen iron if both sides produce plastic. Niggas is whack. Poetic version of internet memes. From the trap crap to watered down boom bap. Rap is trapped in the same loop, it seems. As far as bars and composition, music. The DNA in they verses usually don't stand up to scrutiny. When my 
strike his open fist against a bunch of clones and shit. They save space is just a matrix, so false realities get broken quick. And what was written is the primary text when you open it. William Griffin said it best. Drop the mic. You shouldn't be holding it. Oh, yeah. Are, are you serious? Man. Podcast, we out, fellas. Perfect ending. So I have to stand here today as what I was when I was born. A black man. Your racism bounces off me, I'm bulletproof. Your prejudice gets deflected, I'm bulletproof. Your hatred can't penetrate me, I'm bulletproof. Our minds can't be shackled no more, nah, we know the truth. Yeah, from the spot that Malcolm stood, looking out through the window, I'm looking out over my hood, and all I...